Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us on a discussion around how to align the work we do in community to business outcomes. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Common Room, the industry leading platform that helps modern organizations engage with their passionate base of influencers and advocates and users and customers in this new distributed, digital, always on world. And most importantly, drive business outcomes through that engagement. Um, I'm super excited to be chatting with everyone today, um, particularly our guest, Anya. This discussion around how to tie community to business outcomes is so timely because 2023, as we have heard over and over again, is a year where organizations need to do more with less. And, you know, our philosophy that is that a key piece of how you can do more with less is you have to operationalize getting closer to your community, to your customers, to your users, deeply understanding who they are, what problems they're solving for, and to cut through that noise and figure out who needs attention now. And the flip side of that is we need to take all of those learnings and insights in our work with community and tie it back to the success of our overall business. As the CEO of a community first organization, I can say with confidence that this has never been more top of mind for me, and I'm always asking my teams on this topic. So to discuss this very important topic today with me is the incredible Anya Filipova. Anya, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, thanks so much for having me. Um... My name is Anna, um, or Anya, if you uh, know me well, and um, I am the Senior Director of Community and Data at a little company called DBT Labs. Awesome. Well, we'll save time for Q&A at the end, so I invite everyone to please put your questions in the chat, but we'll get started. So Anya, and I'm privileged to know you well, <laughs> can you please tell us about DBT Labs and the amazing community that you lead there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, DBT Labs is a um, very special company. Our mission is to empower data practitioners, and we do that by making it easy for them to create and disseminate organizational knowledge through tools. Um, DBT Labs and the community behind DBT, the technology, have pioneered um, a practice called analytics engineering. And uh, today we support a community of over 60,000 people. Um, who are analytics engineering practitioners. Um, and they are all committed to uh, working with us to change how data teams are working together. That's an incredible mission. And it's amazing that, you know, you're empowering all of these data practitioners, 60,000. That is, I would say, one of our uh, fastest growing and bigger communities that we work with. So what role does community play in your business and how has it evolved as you know, you've grown both the community and also the company? Yeah. Um, one of the ways I think about framing this is always um, going a step back and asking the question, like, what kind of community is it um, and how does that impact the business that you're mm -hmm. running. And um, in, in my mind, there's generally three different kinds of uh, communities or communities that skew in, in, in one of those directions. There's brand communities, uh, there's communities of practice, and then there's communities of um, uh, contributors. Uh, so your classic open source projects. And um, the DBT community is a little bit more on the brand and very heavy on the community of practice side. And what that means is um, a community of practice is one where folks get together and share knowledge about how to do a particular thing. And so we said we pioneered the practice of analytics engineering. And so the community gets together and helps each other um, develop this practice further. So if you can imagine a professional trade association, like a group of accountants, for example, it's very similar in, in that sense. And so it's a community that produces resources and, and talks and, and helps each other level up. Um, and people have conversations at multiple levels. They talk about not just how to use the technology, but also how to structure teams and how to evolve teams around the kind of things that um, the technology now enables how to enact organizational change in order to leverage the new technology that they feel empowered by. Fantastic. And so it's not, yeah, so it's not always about the product itself, right? It's exactly. not sort of 
support channel. It's really about how do we empower a group of individuals to kind of live their job life better. Exactly. And so when we talk about the value of the DBT community internally, um, we often talk about this aspect of it, of being at the forefront of a practice that um, as it grows, uh, the the technology that we build grows into. So we talk mm -hmm. a lot about building for the community and um, keeping up uh, with the community. They kind of pull us in a certain direction um, technologically. Uh, we're, um, we're often reading uh, thoughtful, opinionated posts about what feature we should build next from mm -hmm. uh, community leaders, because uh, that's the kind of dynamic uh, that we have. And so um, it's really a kind of guiding principle for how we do things at DBT Labs. I mean, that makes so much sense for modern organizations who don't want to just be, and it's not enough, frankly, today to just be a product, right? You want mm -hmm. to be this platform of economic opportunity. And it sounds like the community is such a key part of that mission. Mm -hmm. So how do you articulate this value of community internally, right? Um, there's a lot there and not all of it is kind of this transactional relationship with the business, which it shouldn't be and it couldn't be, but how do you talk about that value internally? Yeah, um, I think there are three levels at which uh, this, uh, at which we break down uh, the, the impact of community on the business. So um, I like to think about impact as um, uh, as kind of the guiding principle in the operative word um, rather than value, because one of our company values is um, that uh, we aim to generate more value than we than we extract. Uh, and so um, value for us is something that we drive and um, impact is something that um, the community has on us. And there's kind of three perspectives um, at different levels of the organization. So from a um, annual planning financial point of view, um, we, we think about um, how to express impact uh, in the level of organizational investment. So um, if we invest a certain amount of resources, what sort of impact will that have on the business? Um, we uh, also uh, at a um, functional level in the organization, talk about efficiency um, mm -hmm. and efficiency uh, as a means of, um, of creating impact. And actually, community is a very um, incredible point of leverage for most organizations. And so um, it can be an incredibly efficient way to drive uh, your business forward, especially in a time like this, to your point in the introduction, 2023, everyone wants to do more with less. And community is actually a phenomenal way to, to, to generate that leverage. Um, and then uh, we also talk about um, our impact in, um, in the form of uh, concrete measures of tactical success. So when we run a program, for example, our meetup program, what impact has it had? Um, what are um, what are the concrete things um, that we've been able to drive? Um, that framing is incredible. So what I'm hearing is, you know, you engage and grow this incredible community of brand and practice. It helps you get closer to the needs of your users and practitioners to build a better product roadmap, for mm -hmm. example. But there's also this kind of flywheel or network effect aspect where the more people that join the community, the more knowledge is shared. It's better for everybody in the community. And by vis-a-vis -vis that sort of flywheel effect, you're getting actually a lot more leverage and efficiency and how you can you know, distribute your content and your guys' messages and the things that are important to the business. Exactly. Um, an important thing that is often um, difficult to articulate in an organization mm -hmm. is that the value of a um, community presence and the impact of community on the business spans multiple levels of your business. Yes, it it's across the entire customer your journey. <laughs> exactly. Um, all the way from your um, acquisition of new customers, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I love telling the story of how folks discover the DBT community because um, they are uh, kind of 
intuitively understanding that there are different and better ways of working in their profession. And um, when you find a community of 60,000 other people who agree with you about this fundamental principle, um, that's a, um, a huge leap forward. And the technology kind of comes hand in hand with that. Um, and that's why the brand um, aspect of the community is incredibly strong. But it's so much more than that, right? It's not just acquisition. It is also um, the ability to create leverage in your business by supporting um, your uh, customer success motion, right? Being able to um, support your customers better and have your customers support each other. And um, and those are the kind of things that um, historically are kind of hard to quantify, but um, incredibly impactful at in every element of the business. Yeah, so let's talk about quantifying something mm -hmm. that is so clearly powerful and so qualitatively important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I think that's kind of the next evolution of the community practice, right? How do we mm -hmm. take these things that we know and we engage with every day on the ground and how do we start to really put you know, metrics behind it to some extent. Mm -hmm. And I know that like most organizations are very early in how you want to think about these things, mm -hmm. because once you put metrics against something and you're tracking it, you want to make sure you're thinking about the right things because mm -hmm. it can create unnatural incentives, right? If you're only tracking exactly. the growth of the community, for example, yeah. then you're not going to be thinking about all these other critical factors, like is the community supporting each other, right? If you're mm -hmm. only focused on support metrics, you're going to lose that intangible of, you know, that aspirational practice element as well, and it'll turn mm -hmm. into a support channel. And so how do you kind of think about these complexities when you're thinking about how do I quantify all of this with some metrics? Yeah. Um, one of the things that uh, we do is um, we have three very distinct sets of KPIs, and they're actually powered by uh, the things that we see in Common Room, as you know. And um, those KPIs are um, representative of some of those different buckets of impact in the business. So there's um, the awareness and acquisition component, and that's um, the number of new community members that we see and their relative activity. So this, that one's pretty straightforward. And we have community members across a bunch of different platforms and Common Room helps us aggregate all of that and be able to report on it, which is incredible. Um, we also have a concept of a community contributor. And this is where that uh, sharing of knowledge and community of practice really kicks in. These are the folks who are responding to one another. These are the folks who are um, writing blog posts, giving talks, um, kind of tweeting about um, certain interesting things about DBT. And then there is a concept of a um, leader in the community or a community advocate. These are folks who are thought leaders in this space. These are folks who are um, taking on uh, roles that are um, exceptionally high leverage. So for example, um, uh, we have folks who are um, mentoring other community members um, in a writing program um, and uh, and things like that. So it's kind of like the next layer of, mm -hmm. um, of contribution. And um, when you take those three things together, they represent kind of uh, the the different aspects of that of that business journey and that funnel. And that last bit is really. Um, is really where the advocacy happens. These are the folks who are um, going out and helping drive and, and bring more people into the community in a variety of ways. So it's kind of a, a really nice circle. Yeah, I mean, we talk so much in technology about products being platforms, but what's mm -hmm. really clear is that, you know, with DBT, the full suite of the value and the impact that you make for your user base is a platform with product yeah. just being one pillar of that, right? Of the service. Exactly. Um, exactly. So I love this concept that, you know, community spans the entire customer journey. And it's absolutely true. It's in the metrics that you're thinking about. It's in the day-to-day -day of the people that you engage with in that there's folks who are just discovering the practice. There's folks who are, you know, top of the funnel, if you will, in mm -hmm. traditional terms. There are folks who are, you know, early in their exploration of the practice and of the product specifically. And you can relate that in traditional kind of sales and marketing or customer journey terms mm -hmm. to like activation. And then, you know, you mm -hmm. become a customer, you become an advocate. All of that 
leads me to believe that there's a significant, you know, when we talk about operationalizing community across the, the organization and the business, there sounds like there has to be a lot of cross-functional, you know, teamwork and collaboration and alignment between what you do and you sit in marketing, correct? Like as a function um, and the other yes. teams like sales or sales engineering or um, mm -hmm. product or other folks in marketing. Mm -hmm. How do you guys kind of operationalize that today? What does it look yeah. like? We have a fantastically complex organizational structure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because of all of these different components. And yeah. so you have um, to do it in a new way, right? There's a new exactly. way that organizations need to engage. And like exactly. you kind of the inside and the outside have to all come together. Yeah. And so we, we've actually spent quite a bit of time over the last, um, I want to say six months, mm -hmm. uh, being really specific about that. Earlier on, we talked about, um, uh, how to quantify the kind of organizational investment that's being made. And so there are different aspects of organizational investment that are tied to kind of these different pillars of mm -hmm. what um, impact the community has. Yeah. Um, we have um, a section of the team that rolls into marketing and is uh, really focused on acquisition and um, kind of spreading, spreading the good word, if you will, <laughs> yeah. um, about DBT. And then there's a component that is much more focused on um, and aligned with uh, engineering product um, and design. And these are folks who are um, helping give and uh, drive feedback cycles, for example, for, um, for parts of the product. And um, there are also folks who are um, supporting uh, the community in terms of uh, writing prescriptive content like documentation or guides uh, that we know are going to be like extre extremely long lived. And so there, there are kind of components of this that are very, very cross-functional. And um, we've had to iterate quite a lot on that model. Um, the biggest chunk of the team rolls up into marketing, but there are also pieces that roll into um, roll into the R and D side of the business. And, um, I think that that is actually the right way to think about it and the right way to reason about respective areas of investment, right? It just like with your PLG motion, um, yeah. in a business, right? It's, it's a combination of so many different things. It's a lot of, um, investment on the marketing side, but you also can't have a PLG motion without product investment and, um, support investment and, and thinking about leverage and scale in those areas. So uh, community is much the same way. That makes a ton of sense. So you mentioned earlier on, you always, you know, as an organization want to provide more value than you extract. A mm -hmm. lot of companies are, you know, technology, fast growing technology companies with big growth goals. They have sales teams, right? Mm -hmm. Who inherently are, spreading the good word about the value of paying for a product. Mm -hmm. How do you guys kind of reconcile that? I know it's a very common kind of, I think, line to walk. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, we would love to kind of hear your perspective on how you think about it at DBT. Yeah. This is also something that we've spent quite a bit of time thinking about over the last year or so. And it's really important to us to get this right. Mm -hmm. um, and critical we, for both sides. For the critical for both sides, exactly. The the business, yeah. The way that we frame this is that um, DBT is not just a product, it is a open source technology that has become an industry standard. It is something that folks can rely on. And if for whatever reason, um, the uh, cloud offering is not something that is um, the right solution for folks, we want folks to be able to have the option to um, to expand, to, to roll it themselves, to uh, to kind of push the forefronts and the edges of, of that technology. And, but at the same time, um, it's very important for an open source standard to have 
um, stability and funding. And so when you build a company around an open source project, you're kind of thinking about that aspect of it. It's actually really important for the company to be healthy and to be sustainable in order to keep supporting that standard and making sure that, that it continues to um, do the right things for the community. Um, and so when you think about it from that point of view, um, it becomes really simple to reason about uh, the what might be a perceived distinction between like revenue and community and other mm -hmm. sides of the business. That distinction doesn't exist, right? It um, both sides fuel one another, and um, in in the case of uh, of DBT Labs internally, we we spend a lot of time kind of connecting those dots, and we think that it is more authentic if um, folks are discovering the product and are enabled by the community that they're, um, that they're encountering, that they see the social proof, um, that people hear about it from other users rather than from us. And that drives a lot of how we, how we do outreach, how we do events, how we do um, a lot of our kind of revenue generating areas of the business. Yeah. Is it fair to say the philosophy is, you know, the company doesn't exist without the community. We're also stewards of the future of the open source Correct. project. At the same time, we want to have that conviction as a company that the value added, you know, features and products that we build mm -hmm. are truly and authentically providing that value that people want to pay for. And if they raise their hand and say, hey, I need this, you want them to go to DBT. If there's other tools out there for whatever reason, you know, they want to be, you know, you want to give them that kind of breadth of choice as well. Exactly. Yeah. And I love that because it holds kind of mm -hmm. the, the organization accountable to say, hey, we're going to build the best product because this is yes. our project to some extent. And like, if we can't do that, then like, right, like something is missing. But at exactly. the same time, like we must be stewards of this community first and foremost. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> what are some like super specific tactical things that you think or you've seen like, you know, the revenue side do that is community first? I think mm -hmm. everyone's trying to walk this line. And I, you know, you mentioned the way you reach out, the way you host events. Like, mm -hmm. can you give our audience a couple examples? Oh, my gosh. There are so many. Um, <laughs> there are... There are a bunch of really um, collaborative things that we do across uh, uh, different parts of the business. Um, the way that we do um, events. And so annually we run a conference called Coalesce and mm -hmm. there is a sponsor section that is full of folks in the ecosystem that integrate with DBT. And um, normally what happens in, in a situation like that is folks walk around, they get their badges scanned, et cetera. Um, that's not how we run that aspect of the conference. Um, yeah. uh, there's no badge scanning, uh, but there are activation stations. There mm -hmm. are um, t-shirt dyeing stations and uh, hot chicken eating stations and uh, um, a variety of ways that people um, and uh, different folks in the space that integrate with DBT kind of express their own um, brand and their own value and, um, really engage and interact with people. Yeah. And so it, um, we find that things like that are actually more effective. At so creative. Getting, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They, they and are authentic. I think that's they the word. Authentic. Yeah. They are, um, they're intrinsically valuable in and of themselves. They bring joy, but at the same time, they're incredibly impactful for the folks who are um, trying to get to know folks uh, for the first time. Um, so that's one example. Another example. Far more memorable than a badge scan at a booth. I'll exactly. Say. Exactly. And I know that we're not the only ones who do this, um, but it, it is like a really vivid example for me. Another one is... Um, the way that we organize um, events that are designed to um, create a funnel for our um, revenue team, for example, to, to 
follow up with uh, prospective paying customers. Um, a lot of it is done in tandem with mm-hmm. um, community events. We want to make sure that wherever we go around the world, um, when even if it's an exclusive space because of a, um, a specific event, that there's a community element to it that we yeah. can invite everyone to and help them participate because it creates more opportunities to, to give people that social proof. Right. Yeah. To, to meet other people who have already used the technology and who say, hey, this is really awesome. I, I, I think you should check it out. Yeah, I think what I'm hearing is culturally at DBT, you kind of reframe all of the various customer facing functions, whether it's sales or, or support or community to really be community centric. <laughs> and mm-hmm. when you do that, it all kind of falls in place. Right. Um, everyone kind of has their own. I'll say like day-to-day objectives, but at the heart of it is that focus on the community. Exactly. And um, a big way that we do that is we hire incredible people all yeah. across the company who have done this before, who have worked at open source companies before, and um, who we know we can trust in- implicitly with um, showing up in, in that way. Uh, yeah. that is value generative for that community. Yeah. And I think for, you know, folks that are earlier in their career, like you know, our vision and our belief is that this is how the best, fastest growing, you know, most customer obsessed organizations will look and operate. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys are very much on the leading forefront of that new kind of mode of what does it mean to be a technology company today? <laughs> and how do we engage with our customers? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Well, you've talked a lot about the metrics that are important to you and how to communicate that impact at multiple levels. How did you start that metrics journey? And what advice do you have for community or marketing leaders who are kind of working on getting their arms around a key set of metrics? And again, it's never been more urgent than now, right? Everyone Mm -hmm. is being asked to prove out the impact of the work they do. And Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a, there's a specific focus that is like, Hey, qualitatively, I get it, but like, show me the numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we're a data company, so yeah. <laughs> we're always thinking about numbers and, yeah. and metrics and sometimes maybe a little bit too much. But um, for, uh, for DBT Labs as an organization, metrics are actually an important um, alignment mechanism across the business. It's an important language that we use to be able to not just describe um, impact and value, but how do we work with one another? Mm-hmm. Um, And so when uh, we think about uh, and when we started on this journey to design metrics, we really wanted to um, find mechanisms that would uh, both demonstrate very clearly what um, what the function of this thing was, but also how do I work with this function? How does the thing that I'm doing over here connect with this thing that's happening over here? And um, in order to do this well, you have to really understand um, your business flywheel. You have to really understand your customer funnel and your customer journey and um, be, uh, be really thoughtful about those um, high leverage points where you, can, um, where you can make a difference. And so um, we have a few of those buckets. And um, there are things that we've kind of identified and proven over time to be incredibly impactful. And, um, and, and then we spent time with your team and um, uh, understanding all of the different ways that we could articulate that with Common Room. So it was, uh, it was a really fun process. And so now Common Room is powering all of our um, key community business metrics. Uh, it's been such a pleasure working with you guys. And, you know, frankly, it's why we do what we do and get up in the morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so what do you do when you find gaps in alignment mm-hmm. between your goals for the community and the goals of the marketing team or the business? Because we all know at a fast growing company, there is mm-hmm. always some chaos. <laughs> How do you resolve these discrepancies when they inevitably come up? Yeah, um, this was, uh, I'm, 
I'm really bummed that Janessa is not here um, for personal reasons because um, she has a lot of things to say about yeah. um, kind of our collective journey, both her and I, and in, in, in getting to this place of alignment. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think one of the things that we've realized as we started working together more was um, that there a lot of... Um, Perceived. And Janessa's uh, the VP of marketing. Correct. Yes, Janessa's the VP of marketing. Thank you um, at DBT Labs. And Janessa and I started out working um, as um, kind of separate parts of the organization. Um, oh, interesting. And, I didn't know that. Yeah, exactly. We started out um, as like community was its own thing and marketing mm-hmm. was its own thing. And um, it was actually quite difficult to collaborate because our goals were very similar. And so uh, that clarity didn't exist for both sides of our teams around like, well, how is the thing that I'm doing here different from the thing that I'm doing over there? And um, it's one of the motivations behind kind of creating the org structure that we did um, over the last year of being really explicit about like, all right, well, these are the things that actually roll into marketing and we track under the marketing budget um, because they are actually incredibly aligned. And so so what I've learned from that experience is that a lack of alignment is actually maybe the opposite. It's uh, you're <laughs> aligned in terms of your goals, but maybe your org structure doesn't correctly allow you to work together towards that alignment. So I would ask the question of like, is it is it really a lack of alignment? Are people not working towards the same things or are you just uh, not creating the right structure for them to do that? That makes so much sense, right? When we think about the function of community as part of, you know, activating the top of the mm-hmm. funnel or supporting folks through that customer journey faster, mm-hmm. and better, and more delightfully, right? Mm-hmm. These goals map to every single function at the company that is customer facing. And so exactly. any misalignment, you have to ask that question of like, are we misaligned <laughs> or is our operational processes not letting us really like map to each other in the right way? Exactly. Yeah. That and I, mind. I don't really want folks to take away from this conversation that like, Oh, I should have a community person in like every aspect of the <laughs> business, right? You have to like really understand where that leverage comes from yeah. and um, how to align those parts of the business together. Um, but it's really a platform awesome. team. You can think about community, right? When you think about products and you think there's platform teams, community is very much that kind of platform layer as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, Well, we have a great question from uh, Piper Wilson. So where do you suggest starting when you don't know where to start? Or maybe another way to ask that is Mm. how do you jumpstart your community metrics journey? Ah, yeah. Thanks for the good question, Piper. When you don't know where to start, my general advice is start by talking to your community and start by understanding what they're trying to do. What are their challenges? What are the things that they need from you? And um, then think about what are the parts of the business that are uniquely enabled to deliver on those things. And um, then think about ways that your uh, community organization or community team can um, can really create leverage and, and do that in a community first way. And once you do that, the metrics kind of become obvious. I love that. Don't lead with the numbers, right? Lead with exactly. defining the problems and how you can solve them better. Exactly. What is the problem that your community is trying to solve right now? Um, And what do they need from you? Um, Next question. What tools do you use to measure the effectiveness of your community efforts? Right. We know Mm -hmm. um, you use Common Room, but are there other pieces of your stack and are there ways you use Common Room that are, you know, highly impactful to you? Um, And then also, uh, yeah, so it could be things like Slack, user conferences, educational programs, kind of Mm -hmm. what is your like stack? Yeah, Um, because our community, uh, the DBT community lives on so many different platforms. Um, uh, Common Room is kind of that foundational platform um, where uh, 
we funnel all information about things that are happening in the community. And so we have um, our Slack group, we have um, our um, community forum, uh, we have uh, social media, we have um, things like, you know, Reddit and Stack Overflow and, and all of those things. Um, and uh, we integrate all of that into the Common Room platform. And uh, then we take all of that data and we take all of those, um, uh, those activity signals and um, try to understand uh, and, and combine those, um, those user profiles. And that allows us to have a really like high level overview of how someone moves through the community journey with us. Um, and then we can tie that to how they're moving through the product journey with us. Um, at what point did they uh, join the, the community? Um, at what point in their like discovery process? At what point in the PLG process? Um, and uh, in order to do that, we, um, we funnel a lot of this data to our data warehouse. We actually, of course we use DBT um, and uh, we uh, we do quite a lot of work ourselves to kind of shape and 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 define um, and track those things. Yeah, I think what's so incredible and unique and what everyone should strive for is the, you know, I talk about it like knowing your community, knowing your customers. You guys have such a deep awareness of that mm -hmm. customer journey, how people become engaged and become aware, and how they mm -hmm. move through, and all of that. You know, I think is a testament to both like the community centricity of the organization, but also the fact that you are a data company. Um, and mm -hmm. I think those are two really incredible takeaways. We got another great question, which is what metrics should you not track? So mm -hmm. either they're not valuable or they're actually detrimental to your cause and could send the wrong signal. This might be a little bit of a cop-out answer, but it's anything that's not aligned with what you're trying to do, right? If it's not aligned with what your community needs from you, it's probably not a useful thing to incentivize people to measure. And, yeah. and so you kind of have to start there. Um, Once you start measuring, exactly. there's going to be incentives. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't want to say that there is always a specific thing that is not valuable because it it really depends so much um like i said very early in this conversation there are three different like subsections of um of communities and the things that um matter for one are are not necessarily the same as the other so start by understanding what your community is for how you support that community and it will become more obvious what is you want there to incentivize. one metric if I mm -hmm. had, if you had to choose, is there one metric that is like the North star metric for you? Mm. It's yes. a tough question. I know <laughs> it's a tough question. And I've, I've actually thought about this a whole bunch. Um, I think it's, it can be really satisfying to measure like, um, new community members, it can be satisfying to measure activity on a certain platform. Mm -hmm. But the thing that is um, really important to measure as a signal of health in your community is whether people are, um, are they coming back? Are they mm -hmm. doing multiple things with you? Are yeah. they showing up to that meetup and, and also hanging out in your community forum, right? Or maybe attending your conference. Um, can you start to identify those things? And how can you encourage more people to do that and become much more connected with you? Yeah, I mean, you're not winning them over in a transactional moment, right? You want them to mm -hmm. kind of really grow their career with the brand and with the product and with the business. Exactly. And what does that look like? What does that mean? And it's that yes. repeat engagement. It's sticking around. It's it's making DBT like part of their work identity to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, well, last question, Anya. As you head into 2023, um, what's top of mind for you in terms of aligning the roles and responsibilities that you're prioritizing? Mm. What's top of mind for me? Um, a big thing that we have been thinking about this year is scale. There's an inflection point that yeah. we're hitting at the numbers that um, that we are at. 
And so um, it becomes really important to reason in this like multi-platform space about mm -hmm. what is the right platform, um, what is the right experience for the type of thing that someone in the community is trying to do, mm -hmm. um, and how do we make that accessible in the easiest way to as many people as possible. So operationalizing this sort of uh, scale is incredibly like top of mind. And um, the second is continuing to deepen those relationships between our um, kind of revenue generating business functions and the community and um, continuing to build that muscle. It's ever more important. And like I said before, community is an incredible source of leverage at various parts of the business. So it's just an incredible opportunity to do more together. Fantastic. Um, well, wow. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, your learnings, your you know pioneering wisdom with uh, me and with the group. Um, and uh, yeah, please feel free, folks in the audience, to you know follow up with our community, uncommon, join it. If you have further questions, we'll try to see if Anya can get to them. Um, but thank you again, Anya. Uh, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure. And thank you for being on this journey with us. It's been uh, fun. Honored to do so. <laughs> See you in the Slack. <laughs>